When I was researching my video about the evil farming game, I came across another game that I hadn't heard of, a game called Moirai. Although Moirai is a game where you take on the role of a farmer in a farming village and it does have horror elements, it is definitely not that evil farming game. Nonetheless, it seemed like a really cool game and I wanted to play it after finding out about it. But there is a problem. You see, you can't play Moirai anymore and the reason why is actually kinda sad. So for today's video, let's take a look at the story of Moirai. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. For the past few months, I've been talking to you about Manscaped's crotchal region grooming products, and they just released a brand new trimmer, the Lawn Mower 3.0, of which I'm one of the first people in the world to have this thing. Like the old one, it's completely waterproof, ergonomically designed, and has skin-safe technology to prevent you from having any nicks and snags. And if you have the Lawnmower 2.0, all of the blades are completely interchangeable with this model. It has a powerful 7000 RPM motor, and an upgraded battery that lasts for up to 90 minutes. Now there's anti-tug adjustable trimming guards, you know, in case you wanna make a topiary garden down there like Edward Scissorhands, you're good. And a built-in LED light so you can get a real good look at what you're cutting down there. And when you order the Perfect Package 3.0 kit at manscaped.com, you also get the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, both of which will keep your ball smelling really good. When you purchase the Perfect Package 3.0 kit, you get the biggest bang for your buck. As a subscriber, you get 20% savings on your order instantly, a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, and for a limited time, subscribers get both the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Get 20% off and free shipping on the Perfect Package 3.0 when you use code WANG at manscaped.com. Although Moirai isn't that farming game where you kill your wife and have to hide the body from the cops, it is a farming game that does involve a murder. But to tell the story of Moirai, we first have to take a look to its creator, an indie game developer from Australia named Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson has a number of games under his belt, including some very simple browser games that you can play on his website. Personally, I got completely sidetracked when I was making this video while playing his Gem Thief demake. And during the early 2010s, Chris was spending most of his time developing another deceptively simple game, a game called Expand. Expand is a game where you traverse a dynamic, expanding circular maze. The object of the game is pretty simple, complete the maze without getting crushed. It's a seemingly easy task that gets more and more difficult as the game progresses. Chris invested all of his time, effort, and money into the development of Expand over the course of the next few years. It was an investment that he had hoped would propel his career as an indie game developer. And after several years of development, Expand would finally be released in September of 2015 on Steam. Although it received mostly positive reviews on Steam, it was far from being the success that Chris had hoped for. With how complex and demanding the development of a game like Expand was, Chris would find himself often needing to take a break. He needed another project to work on, something to help reset his brain during the development of this game. This side project was called Moirai, and Moirai was another short, simple game. It begins when the people of this humble farming village tell you, a farmer, about a woman named Julia. Julia's husband had passed away the year prior, and now her son had gone missing in the nearby cave. Now Julia had gone missing, and moans were heard from the cave. Was it her? So you take it upon yourself to go searching in the cave for Julia, and very quickly you find another farmer covered in blood. And you can ask him some questions. What are you doing here? Why are you covered in blood? Why do you have a knife? To which he might respond something like, Brother, I just elbow dropped King Kong Bundy to Hulkamania. Spare me to join Hulkamania and be like me, Hulk Hogan. So, why the fuck does Hulk Hogan exist in the canon of a farm game? Well, you see, this part of the game was completely different for everybody who played it. I heard moans, what have you done? How to finish this game? What? What the hell are you talking about? I heard moans, what have you done? I've masturbated and spread my cum over the dead body of a strange. What? How could that be possible? Where are these answers coming from? 
Well, let's keep on going. So after you encounter the farmer, you wind up finding Julia in the cave. She's dying and covered in blood and asks you to put her out of her misery, which you could either decide to spare her or kill her. No matter what you choose, you wind up covered in blood, and then as you traverse back through the cave, you encounter another farmer. This farmer asks you the same questions that you asked the other farmer, but this time you can fill them out with whatever you feel like. Ask how you beat the game, talk about cum, talk about Hulkamania, anything goes. And when that's all done, you enter your name and your email address, and later on you'll get an email telling you what happened to your character. It was a pretty interesting social experiment wrapped up in a very simple game, and in an interview with PC Gamer, Chris explained his reasoning for doing this. From most players' perspective, when they run into the person in the cave for the first time, they think of them as an NPC, not an actual person, my right designer Chris Johnson told me over the phone from Adelaide. I think there's an interesting element in that. There's a certain codified language about how people approach games, and one of those things is that most of the characters you'll interact with will be some pre-programmed thing, unless the game is explicitly a multiplayer one. I thought it was an interesting thing to subvert that expectation, you don't realize the other player is actually a player. You see them as an NPC. Moirai was quietly released in 2013 when it received a modest amount of playthroughs. But in 2016, a year after the release of Expand, Chris decided he would also put Moirai up on Steam. And he did not expect what would happen next. The game goes extremely viral. You've got massive YouTubers like Jacksepticeye playing it on their channels, and everyone who watches him playing it and putting it on their channels. The game wound up hitting number one on Steam. And while it seems like this might be a very unlikely game to get that kind of attention, it's very obvious to me what the appeal of it is. You see a game like this, and you're like, A, how can I fuck with the other people who are playing this game? And B, how are these people going to try to fuck with me? Despite the simplicity of the game, every single playthrough was a unique experience, and it was free. But as Chris explained to CNET, this wasn't quite the dream it might have seemed like. It was fucking awful. Johnson was utterly unprepared for Moirai's overwhelming success. Being an online project that required storage and server implementation, Johnson hadn't planned for the scale Moirai required now that hundreds of thousands of people were trying to play the game at once. Moirai had received roughly 40,000 playthroughs on other websites prior to the Steam launch, and the service had held up. Johnson couldn't have predicted or prepared for the onslaught. Moirai's database crashed, almost instantly, and Johnson, who was spending Saturday with his family, was blissfully unaware until he arrived home later that night. In that short space of time, Moirai had gone from receiving glowing reviews from every corner of the internet to being called an email scam all in a short 24-hour period. But despite all the stress, all the costs, being called a scam artist, and the fact that he was making absolutely no money on this game, Chris did everything he could to keep those servers online. And at the same time, a number of people had been reaching out to him, warning him of potential exploits in his database. He managed to fix some of these exploits, but realistically he was just juggling too many plates at once. He simply did not have the time and resources to fix everything. And that's when it happens. His database becomes flooded with tens of thousands of new entries. He tries to get rid of them, but then thousands more pop up. There's just no way for him to keep up. It clearly wasn't that this many people were playing the game, but rather that someone was trying to bring the game down, and this person left some clues. The entries flooding Moirai's database referenced a username, and that username was a link to a YouTube page. Weird. On the About page, multiple references to Johnson. The YouTube page linked through to a Twitter account littered with posts about Johnson, about the failure of Xpand, about his abilities as a developer, derogatory tweets aimed at Johnson specifically. It was almost like the person who hacked Moirai was leaving a trail. And it got even worse when the hacker went to the Steam forums and shared the script he was using to attack Moirai. At this point, Chris realized that it was futile. There was just absolutely nothing he could do to keep this game up. So he took the game down and left this message. Moirai is no longer available to play. Thank you to everyone for taking an interest in our little game. Chris, John, and Brad. After the game was taken down, Chris received a message. Hello. Johnson recognized the username. It was the same person who posted the script on his forums, the script used to take down Moirai's servers. The same person 
who had hacked and destroyed Moirai. He had tracked Johnson down and messaged him directly. Johnson replied, You looking for attention? Johnson prodded. A pause. Yes. I'm looking for attention. Johnson was baffled. He asked the only question he could think to ask at that point. What did you think of the game? An awkward conversation ensued and the hacker gave a tidbit of his identity. As it turns out, the hacker was also a game developer. He asked Chris if he wanted to play his game. Chris declined. And that's the end of the Moirai story, and I think there's a lot of lessons to be had in this story. As a creator, sometimes you'll have these projects that you pour everything into, all your time, all your money, all your effort and expectations, and it just never catches on the same way as something you did for shits and giggles. There's stories of that that you can see across just about every single medium. And then there's the lesson that if it's possible for somebody to fuck with something, someone's gonna fuck with it. Or maybe they shouldn't fuck with it, but unfortunately we do not live in should world. But anyway, best of luck to Chris, who does continue to develop games to this day. But that's all for now. If you like this video, you'll probably also like Wavy Web Service video about Flappy Bird. Goodbye. My